Hi, my name is Billy, and I'm a crocheter, a knitter, a painter. I have a few paintings behind me, but I crochet all the time. I mean, my house is a mess because I crochet too much, or my mind starts to create something, and then I have to stop and do it. Can't put it off. I first of all wanted to show you that I had ordered some yarn, some of those specials, $2.99 yarn inspirations by the pound yarn, and I was very pleased with what I got. First of all, I got this beautiful yarn, which I think is nice. And I love the color, as you can see, it's a it's sort of a burgundy color. Well it just so happened that my niece, who's graduating from college, Meredith College in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, this is their school colors. So I decided to make her something. So I decided to make her a scarf with pockets. And I put a button. I don't notice this light too much. It might be. I put a button on each of the pockets at the end of the scarf. And I think it is too much. It is too much light. Let me see. As you can see, I'm right in the window. It make it, it's making me look very pale, which I am. But anyway, this is it. It's very long, so it could wrap around once or twice, and then this will hang down. Now, you can see that better, can't you? Yep. So those are the pockets. What I did is I did the... Um, corner to corner on the main part of the sh of the scarf. And then at the bottom, what I did was I added the pocket to the end instead of just turning it up. And I wanted to have, I did double, double, half double crochet for about five rows. And then I did this with the front posts and then a uh, double crochet in between because I wanted to have a little a little bit of texture to it to match up with this so this is the bottom now I'm going to take uh, I have enough yarn left over that I'm going to make her one of those braided um, excuse my hair braided headbands that, to to go with it so that I've never made one before. So I, I like making something new all the time. It's hard. I get kind of bored with making the same thing over and over again. So that was what came this, this past time in the Yarn Inspiration package. And I also got, which I really like, is this four ply in the light blue. And it has a nice, it feels soft. I'm, I'm sure it's probably like, brunette or something like that. So I will be definitely using that. Then I got is this in there? No. I think I I went ahead and got this um, it's called camel. Camel is a good color for making teddy bears or anything like that and it was all of this was on sale so I wanted to go ahead and get my stash together. And then another thing that was on sale was this Burnett roving yarn. And the colorway is, I don't know. I guess I have to take it out of the bag, right? Okay, take it out of the bag. It's, it feels pretty soft, but it's called Tidal Blue. Well, that, that's, speaks well. It's 100% acrylic and 20% wool. So I thought I'd see what I could make out of this. It's very soft. Um, I don't make a lot of wool. I don't have a lot of wool yarn because I'm allergic to it. So not really allergic to it, but I break out. Yeah, I guess I am because I break out into a, a rash. So I kind of stay away from wool yarn. In the first package that I got from them, I got three cakes. And they 
the mill in 100% acrylic made in Turkey so it is the colorway a little bit thinner than the mandala or is it here I have a mandala right here that I let me see if it's about the same let me just yeah it still seems like the mandala is a little bit thicker than this let me see if I can show you I'm not very good at this here see the mandala is on the right and the left is the but I started making something with this and I I said wait a minute I gotta stop because I'm gonna have to make something with the, the finger waiting finger weight books and see what I can do with that so I got that that and they sent me this and it's lion brand ice cream um, they even left well they left the bands on they usually don't leave the bands on well they they did leave the bands on some other things but um, cool mint is this color I like it I like it it's soft it could make baby stuff oops I just ripped the band off shit oh well what the hey what the hey huh so those have been my acquisitions over the last couple of months and only because only because everything was on sale so but I really like this burgundy color and I'm really having fun doing that behind me is a blanket that I did it's the virus blanket I didn't make it huge I just made it so that it's like kind of like a lamp a lap um, blanket but I don't want to show you around my room because it is horrible it's I've got yarn all over the place over here on my left I'll show you, that if I can. Oops. you see right there I have this and I have everything. I made myself this little pin cushion that I got from um, uh, Claire on Bob Wilson123. I've been following her, oh God, ever since I can remember. Maybe since the beginning. And I've had it ever since. And it's a great pin cushion. And I, I did like she did. I saved my, you know, when you cut off um, a thread from your projects. I put it in a bucket and then I stuffed it with that and it's a good it's a, a nice little thing to do and to use your little cutoffs from all your little yarns so here I put my needles and I have to it looks like I'm down to about four needles I'll tell you I started out with maybe ten and uh, somehow they just seem to uh, walk off I guess they get tired and they just walk away and then I have, listen, I don't have any of the fancy and stuff that some of you guys have, but this is a crystal light container, and I thought, well, I'd like to take this, and I put all my hooks in it, upside down, every which way, so at least I know where my hooks are, except the problem that I have, and I'm sure that some of you have it too, is that I'll start a project with, oops, I'm sorry, did you get that little, yeah, well, anyway, I touched something that I shouldn't have, because I'm, I'm recording this on my computer, um, and, and it just got better, didn't it? So anyway, I don't have any of the fancy stuff that um, to keep things in and stuff like that, so I put all this in my Crystal Light empty container. And it works out so far. It's doing all right. So those are the. And then I have. <laughs> wait till you see this. This is a Whitman sampler. I don't know if you can see it. Box. Okay. And push this back a little bit. See it. So inside. Every time I see buy buttons, I put them in this box. In this Whitman sample box. Aren't they cute? So they're whittling down, but it's always good to have uh, buttons on hand. Well, that's, I'm sure this is backwards, you can't read it, but that's all right. So in this 
little white container with three drawers. I put all my cotton yarn in there. Um, I live, there I go with um, Alm again. I live in uh, Florida and it is hard to make things here with acrylic and wool and uh, alpaca and all that good stuff. So um, I try to make a lot of tops and stuff out of um, out of cotton. I wanted to show you something else that I made. Well, let me see. I don't want to get too far out of way. Well, if you see this right here, this is a painting that I did when I retired at the age of 58. I thought, well, when I retire, well, I went on disability in 58. I thought, well, the first thing I want to do is I like to try my creative painting. So um, those are like three umbrellas on the beach kind of thing. That was kind of bleh, not too good. And then this one behind me, if you can see that, I painted that when I first moved to a new apartment, I had a vacant wall, <laughs> and I had this canvas, and it was crooked. So I said, "Oh hell, give me some paint." So I went and got I got my stash of paint out, and I just painted it just so that I could fill up that wall. And I did it in about um, probably 15, 20 minutes. So it's it's okay, but it's you know it's there. Um, I also got a painting of one of my cats, Samantha, that I did back in 04, I think it says. So, yeah, I don't have very many left, but it's like I was on a roll on things that I like to be creative, and that was one of the things that I wanted to do first. And during that period, I got into buying or getting, making, Christmas wreaths and Christmas trees. So I went on and got wholesale. I would buy these Christmas trees that were just about maybe this high. And then I would buy containers, stick the tree in there, add lights, all kinds of decorations I would glue on there. And I did the same for wreaths, um, just plain wreaths. And then I would decorate them and sell them. And I was very successful in that. I had a, I went, I lived in an area called Lakewood Ranch, and they had, every year they would have a Christmas kind of theme, uh, craft show, and and they were gone just like that. I mean, I sold them all, and I, I enjoyed doing that. And then when I went back up to Virginia for a period of time, for about a year and a half or two years, I uh, did that again, and it was quite successful. I only had a few left that didn't go. So that... that was sort of my creative, and it, but in the meantime, I was still um, knitting a lot then, mostly hats, scarves, that kind of thing. And then I had started crocheting back in my 20s, I believe, and I learned how to do the zigzag stitch. Well, my grandmother taught me the regular granny square, and she taught me how to make the squares she was going blind, and she had this yarn, and she said nobody else was interested. So and this was when I was in my 20s. And so she taught me how to do the granny square. It was so funny, you know, she's half blind, but, you know, I'm sitting there with a needle, and she said, don't do it that way. Carry it over that way. Do it this way. But I got it. I finally got it. So I did make a lot of granny square uh, blankets. I did a lot of blankets. In fact, I did the zigzag. I learned to do the zigzag blanket, and I made one for each one of my nieces and nephews at that time, which were maybe five or six. I don't remember, but it was fun. I enjoyed doing those. Don't do a lot of blankets now. I have a blanket on my couch, a zigzag blanket that I did probably, oh my God, 15, 20 years ago. I still have it. And I made it out of Red Heart. Red Heart, to me, um, I don't care how many times you wash it, how many times you throw it in the dryer, 
it just goes on and on and on. So I really, really recommend Red Heart for a good, um, I use it for my naps. I know I live in Florida, but I turn the air conditioning down low and the fan on. And I crawl up on uh, my bed, pull my blanket out over me. Uh, Rosie comes in, that's my cat, and she lays right here on my side and and put and on my booby and she just she sleeps I sleep so we get our naps in a couple day, times a day but what I wanted to show you and I and tell you but can you wait just a minute yeah let me lean over right here get this box oh and I wanted to show you something else where is it here it is I'll tell you that okay I I was in Walmart I had, uh, I'm sorry, I got a pillow behind my back. I got some of this Red Heart, is it Hygie, H-Y-G-E-E -E yarn. It's very, very soft. But you know what? I hate it. I know it's like you can't really see the patterns that you're working on. So, but anyway, I said, well, I decided I'll make, I'll make a cow and a hat for my niece, my other niece. And it just, I put in some stitches. I'm sh let me see if you can, you can see any of them. Uh, anyway, there they are. But, and I decided to do it kind of holy. <laughs> I did a lot of um, back post and uh, double, triple crochet just to see. So what I did... I made this cowl and it's oh it's super soft I mean super soft but of course not for me I would never oof, I would just die with all that heat and then I made this hat now this is no pattern I mean this is just me doing this then I did this pat this hat and no pattern just doing my thing and then I decided to do some curly cues on the top I've never done curly cues before, but I figured, oh, what the hey, you know, put a little something to it. I don't know if I can, I don't think I can, but well, anyway, oops, oh, oh God, do I look ready for the north or what? I don't know if you can see the curly cues in the back, but I thought it gave it a little something, right? Let me take this off for I die in here, but no pattern, but, but I don't, I don't like it's soft and if, you know I don't know you just I like to do things that have a pattern to it if you know what I mean so that's for my other uh, thing and he's, and I made this, oops here I'm drifting off again I made this poncho and this poncho is from the secret yarnery Krista and the funny thing is I made it almost in the exact same colors as she did it's a teal in the beige. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm sending it to my niece. It was very easy to do. Um, it has the the beige. Oh, what I did do that she didn't do, excuse me, is I added a little bit of beige at the top because my niece is uh, not as big as I am. She's thin. But this was supposed to be like a medium. It was the same um same pattern that she used on her her uh, youtube so this is it and i love it i love making it it was quick it was easy i just i like things that are different but it's not so much detail that you have to can't concentrate on it you know i just like to sit watch my movies <laughs> netflix watch watch the YouTube channel and just crochet away so that's one of my projects that I completed I've got a lot of completed oh the one thing that I did complete this week was I made a campfire cardigan never made it before for my niece do you want to see it of course you do wait a minute let me get that it's just one box away over here. Let me get up again. 
What I need is one of those. Where's my reacher? <laughs> I have a reacher somewhere. I need to pull things around. Let me get that. There I go again. Oh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is a. Uh, is it in here? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Now, I followed. I followed. Um, it was it. I know that some of the tutor there are tutorials on for the campfire cardigan, but I followed one that was online somewhere, and I don't know who it was by, but it takes a while. This is my campfire cardigan, and I put long sleeves on it, as you can see, and it has a hood. Here's the hood. And uh, I made it quite long, so it'd be nice and cover the cover the butt. Got to cover the butt, right? And no buttons or anything. It's just a cardigan that's just supposed to hang. Um, I had a lady over at the community center try it on. Oh no, the neighbor down the hall. She tried it on for me, and I took pictures. This is the back where you hook it all up here. But I love it. I just love it. And I have a cousin. She said, oh, Billy, I'd love to have one of those. I said, I'll make you one, but it'll have to be out of the yarn that I have laying around. So that would be fun. We'll see what happens with that. This, this yarn, I, uh, except for the, well, I had this. I had the blue. I had the green for Christmas. And this is the variegated, um, Oh, what is it? Stripe. Stripe yarn. Red heart stripe yarn. Now, all of this is red heart, I believe. Yes, all of this is red heart. And it'll last forever. And it's, I haven't washed it. It's still soft. But I believe it will be um, even softer when she washes it. Um, I leave it up to them to wash it. I don't, I don't wash them. I live in a community where I have to pay to wash things. So... They can wash it if they want to, but it is. It feels good. It feels good. Very, very good. And let's see. What else do I have down? Oh, this is a pattern by Nostalgia. Is that it? Nostalgia? No. You know who I'm talking about. Anyway, so this is a scarf. And what I did is I put a little embellishment at the end. So that when you put it on and you wrap it around, I made it a little bit longer, but this is because they're going to be. But anyway, that the, the embellishment will hang right there, right, right. You see that? There you go. See right there. It has a minor. Well, anyway, this this is, and I made two of these, and very easy, very quick. You'll like it. You'll like it. You'll like it. Um, oh. Then I made this little thing. It's just a bunch of little triangles. It, I saw it on YouTube. Not on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. And you'll see that I'm a great YouTube. I, I watch everything. But I thought somebody might like it just to wear as a little something, as a little neck piece on their suit or whatever. Okay, I'm sending that on. As you can see, it's just one of a kind. <laughs> All my stuff is one of a kind. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, I went on this one little girl's channel, and she made the cutest little um, tops for the summer. And I made this out of cotton. Of course, this wraps around your neck. I'm not trying it on because it would be like, well, you know what it would be like. And it, and then that. This ties in the back, but they're so cute, and it's for somebody with little boobies. But I thought, for for a child that's running around in the summer and it's hot, little cotton tops. I just wanted to make something different, and I made uh, two or three of these, and I sold one at the craft show, and she loved it, and it was a a, a red, a burgundy color. 
So I did that. I know you're getting tired of me, aren't you? Bending in and out and showing. Oh, this is this is a baby blanket that I made. And the color's lilac. And the the pattern is the oh god, what is it? It's the is it the sad saddle? No, 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 no. This pattern is from Krista at the uh, Secret Yarnery, and it is the drunken, I love this, the drunken granny's blanket, drunken granny blanket, and working up, I just love it, it's one thing I've noticed, and I've got these comments from other people that I've made blankets about, for, um, babies love putting their fingers through holes, so, um, this one friend said that um, the blanket, it was, a, I think it was a granny square blanket, that that kid puts his fingers through the holes and just drags it around with him, has to have it when he takes his naps, and it makes me feel happy, but I just, I just love, the, and, and the, um, the border was just something I made up, I, I love half double crochet, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather do that, so I did the half double crochet for a couple of rows, and then this is just, um, I don't remember now, I think it's like chain, all in the same stitch, you chain five, go in, chain five, go in, chain five, skip, skip four, but I think I found that on YouTube, but I enjoyed making it. I think it makes a nice border. So those are all my, not all, but uh, some that I'll show you now, but I have some some others going on, but finally, I uh, adore, let me see, here it is, I adore the, the uh, Canadian Crutcher, Debbie, and I just, she's kind of like me in the fact that we do the projects, we show them, I'm not into this for money, I'm not into this for um, it's not a business. It's just a way of me communicating with other people that love to crochet. And I'm very much, um, my blanket fell down. I'm very much a homebody. I don't, um, I don't have the money or the means to go out all the time. And I buy my yarn at Walmart most of the time when I order my groceries, which I go and pick up. I order some a couple scans of yarn to add to my stash which is not very much right now but um, a friend of mine called me and says Billy I have a great idea for you to make I said what is that she said a damn it doll I went what in the hell is a damn it doll she said well you have to you have to go online and check it out so I did and the Dammit doll, as you all know, online they make dolls out of, uh, not yarn, but out of fabric. And they do all kinds of uh, political dolls, uh, any kind you can think about. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll try it. I'll see what I can come up with. Well, I have to say that the, the first one I made, I didn't really like that much. But you wouldn't believe it. I sold it when I did my little craft fair. So, I'll show you the one I just finished. This is my little damn it doll. Isn't she cute? Anyway, this is what it's... Now, this is... I don't want to lead you astray because I was thinking of making and selling these on Amazon Marketplace. So, I said, well, maybe what I should do to make everything legal is I'm um, sending an email to the CEO of Dammit Dolls. Well, he said, no, I can't use the word. So I called my attorney and my attorney said, well, you can make the dolls because these are crocheted, but you can't use the word Dammit in it and you can't use their saying. But I'm going to read you what their saying says. Whenever things don't go so well and you want to hit the wall and yell, here's a little Dammit doll. Just grab it firmly by the legs 
and find a place to slam it. And as you whack the stuffing, stuffings out, yell, damn it, damn it, damn it. This is my little damn it dog. So when you get pissed off at somebody, you can just hit them up like this. So, I made one and sent one to Debbie. And I sold all of them. I don't know if I had probably a good two dozen at my craft shows. And I sold them all. Now, I'm going to tell you, down here in Florida, you have a lot of Q-tips. And you know what Q-tips are, right? Yeah. So... They really don't go in for stuff like this. But I notice the younger, I mean younger, like 30, 40, 50s, right, go in for this kind of stuff. And so I sold them all. But this little doll, I just love her. Isn't she cute? Oh, she's got little eyes. I got them a little off-center here on the X's. But, you know, they're all made out of yarn. And I put her a little bow on top. And I gave her a little, a little uh, frosted hair, pink frosted brown hair. And so I'm going to get, uh, made her a little skirt. And I made a lot of um, Donald Trump dogs. <laughs> I had it with scarves and I put his initials on it. I'm not going to tell you what initials I put on them. But I'll tell you. A-H and you can figure that out. And then I put some with just D, uh, D-T on it. And I, and I gave him yellow hair and I combed it over and attached it to the back. <laughs> so he has that nice comb over so did the doll but anyway I think that I will um, will go online and, uh, if this is successful and people like it then I'll go online and I'll tell you how I made them or show you or whatever I've not done this is my first video only and I've already done 31 minutes already so I will um, let you know what my status is on this, and I'm going to give her a, a different. I'm going to give them a different name. I've been somebody at the uh, craft show should, said I should call it shitty dog, shitty doll, but I'm not going to do that. Um, a stress relief doll. I, I haven't decided. I have to mull around. But if you have any ideas about what I should call my dolls, and not have the word damn it in it, please comment below. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not on Facebook or anything. I'm not doing this for money. I just, I just love to have fun with it. And this is one of the things that I enjoy doing. And so, thank you for listening. And I hope that you would tune in again. And, uh, hi, Debbie. And I have to say one final thing. I watched Z, Zelda, the other day. Two days, I guess it was two days, two or three days ago. And I cried like a baby. She made me feel so at home. Uh, because when you are basically a shut-in and you don't have anyone to share your craft with or talk to about your craft, and it is um, very sad to be alone. And especially during the holidays, and I'm I'm alone. Um, I um, it's hard not to be remembered, or but I get through the days by picking up my hook and start hooking. And if the house needs to be clean, it won't get done. Not if I'm hooking. So I wanted to thank you all for listening, and I hope that. Uh, You'll tune in next time, and we'll see what we can uh, see if we can come up, see if I can teach you how to make these. It's so easy. I know you can do it. I have to say, it did take me two or three times to, you know, to come up with what I, what I thought was cool. But uh, yeah, she's ready. I'm sending this to my sister-in-law, who's always bitching about something, and to someone. So this way, she can beat it to death, right? Okay, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. And, um, and of, uh, I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.